here as we take this bill forward. But Amendment 171F is on something completely different. And I don't think it's contentious. I think that I hope that we'll all agree that there's a problem that needs to be solved. And the problem that has arisen, I don't for a minute, has been deliberately created by ministers or by anyone else. I think it's a loophole, but I think it's a very big loophole. And I think that this bill is an ideal opportunity to address it. Uh, all of us would sign up to the idea that partnership between schools and parents is absolutely crucial. In fact, we all make speeches, and whether your mums and dads, grandparents or what, that partnership and the strength of it between the teacher and the parent and the child is crucial. I think it's possibly more crucial in some areas of the curriculum than it is the others. I think of sex education, I think of faith education, uh, some aspects of history. And that understanding about what's happening in the school is very important so that the parent can support the teacher and the teacher can support the parent all in the interests of the child. Indeed, if you look at the government's uh, guidance on relationships and sex education, it says that parents should have visibility of what is being taught to their children. That, that's a central core of what I've always thought was the case, both as a teacher and through my time in politics. I was therefore very surprised to see a letter uh, that a, a parent made available to me when she had gone to her child's school to ask to see some of the curriculum papers that were being used in relationships and sex education. In this case, the child was in key stage two, so in the latter years of primary education. And the head had written to the parent to say that he couldn't make the curriculum materials available to her because the organisation who was delivering that part of the curriculum said that it was exempt under section 43.2 and section 42 of the Freedom of Information Bill. Now, this is what has happened. In many areas of the curriculum, especially the contentious areas, schools look to outside bodies to bring in their expertise. Indeed, we've had a discussion already in this bill that talked about the importance of sometimes not necessarily using uh, to, uh, teachers with QTS, but going where there is specialist skill. So this school had asked an organisation to come in and deliver sex and relationships education. But what the organisation had said was, look, th this is our intellectual property. It can't be photocopied and it can't be shown to a third party. And what's happened is the law allows them to claim that the parents are a third party. That can't be right. It doesn't matter whether you like the curriculum material or not. This particular bit of curriculum material, I think, was very contestable in terms of appropriateness for age. But even if I think it was the best bit of teacher material I had ever seen, I would say it can't be right that a parent can't have access to and see that. And if you just think it through your mind, there's so many areas where a parent would want to know what, a what is being taught to a child. And I, I do think that really something um, needs to be done about this. I would also say this is in the areas of contested facts and difficult things to teach that schools are most likely to turn to outside organisations to help. They tend not to do that with maths and English and things like that because they've got the qualified staff in the school. It's the areas that are difficult to teach because they're contested that I think outside organisations are particularly uh, likely to be approached. And whether we like it or not, we live at a time when there are lots of curriculum areas where facts aren't facts and what we all assumed was appropriate to pass on to the next generation is now being contested. Contested information, different views. As a society, as a generation, we're trying to work these things out. But it's absolutely critical that how we give those ideas, those words to the next generation, is done with care and openness and the support of all adults possible. So, my, my Lords, I'm very, very much hoping that the Minister will be able to do two things when she responds to this particular amendment. Firstly, to accept that there's a problem, and secondly, to say how it will be addressed before report stage. What I don't want to happen, which is the position of the letter I read, was that the head has to become the in-between person between the parent and the outside provider. It wasn't fair for that head to have to write to a parent, his parent, who he's going to have an on, on, a, a longer-term relationship with than this relationships and sex education lesson. And I think we can all see that it potentially damaged 
the working relationship between the head and the parent. So even if it is the case that, you know, that the law can be got round or it would have been possible for the parent to see the material or the outside provider didn't, needn't have said that to happen, we can't make the head the go-between the go for this. We've got to have greater clarity. And that's why I would ask the Minister, I say, I don't think this is intentional on anyone's part. If this amendment isn't appropriate, that's fine. We, we think it works. But if it's not appropriate, or perhaps I say, if there's a better way of solving this problem, I know that everybody who supports this amendment will be delighted uh, to um, discuss this with the Minister in the intervening weeks and hope that we can solve this problem. Well,